This week's scenario is process of elimination from the 2014 Steamroller packet. The scenario does have killbox artifice in effect and consists of two zones which can be controlled for one or dominated for two at the end of the second player's second turn. However, you will need to destroy the objectives in the zone as they are contesting models. The objectives have a defense of 5, armor of 18, and 15 health boxes each. For this list, I went with McCade and the Exalted Court, Mullet Karn, Bronzeback, Gladiator, two Max Gatorman, uh, Gatorman Posses because they are very self-reliant. They don't require too much from the caster. The Swamp Gobber Bellow Crew, because it's a good defensive measure. And then two Taskmasters for the Gatorman Crew. Hey everybody, this is Solus. Uh, for this week's game, I've chosen to play a 50-point uh, Black Magic Tier 4 list uh, featuring Bethane, Voice of Everblight, along with Belphegor, Three Angels, a Shredder, two Sorcerers on Hellions, Black Frost Shard, a full unit of Hex Hunters, a full Spotting Vessel unit, and a Forsaken. Okay, my deployment was very simple. Um, I went ahead and put uh, Makeda and the Battle Group towards the center. Because she is a unit, I spread out the Guardians a little bit, probably a little too far. Um, for any kind of defensive ability but I was trying to cover as much of the table as possible with them and then I deployed the gators on each flank to allow them to be able to try to contest zones as early as possible and the battle group was going to be used to kind of go for whichever side needed to be covered. Starting my deployment I place my angels more or less uh, evenly spaced out. I have Belphegor in the center, along with Bethane. And I'm trying to find a decent area to put the Forsaken in. Um, and I put the Black Frost Shard off to my right flank. Uh, spawning Vessel goes on my left flank. And along with the sources, uh, I put a sources and hellion on uh, pretty much each side of each side of the board. Uh, the forsaken is a little bit tricky since it has abomination, and my list is not fearless, uh, so I don't want to have to have uh, activation problems. Um, but so I put the uh, I end up putting the forsaken all the way on my right flank. And I put the Hex Hunters on my left flank next to the spawning vessel. Uh, they're going to pull double duty, um, both hopefully killing stuff and uh, feeding corpses to my pot. My first turn is very basic simple, like most turns. Uh, everything is going to run to try to get into a better position for turn two. So you'll notice that I, I take the two titans, they run up to either side of the objective uh, linear obstacle. That way they can be in a better position next turn. Then the Gatorman Posse activates, they do Dirge of Mist, and then run. Then their Taskmaster will advance, put Tempered Flesh, so they will be, Dirge of Mist gives them a plus to their defense, and Tempered Flesh will give them Tough. Um, Dirge of Mist also gives them, uh, gives them Terror. Uh, now I'm going to pretty much rinse and repeat on the other side with the other Gatorman unit with their Taskmaster, uh, Dirge of Mist and Tempered Flesh. Once, you know, it's a good, uh, good setup, makes sense. Now I'm going to activate the, the Swamp Gobbers. Unfortunately in this list, they're not going to do too much because of all the Eyeless Sight. So I decided to run them to try to get them in a better position for anything I could potentially use them for later. Maybe contesting something, not sure. Uh, but I did know that 
they're going to not be as useful in this game as, as I thought they would be because of Le you know, Legion being having a bunch of Isla Sight. As you can tell, this army does not have Beast Handlers, which I kind of really wish I had. So I had to really think about how my Fury was going to be managed. So I activate Malak Karn, he runs. I then activate the Exalted Court. They then do a standard advance. And because of the tier bonus, I end up dropping three, uh, one additional uh, over what the cost of the spell for Vortex of Destruction. Get it out there early, hopefully you'll be able to use it early. So going into my turn one, um, I want to set up for uh, turn two realistically, uh, hopefully trying to score some points uh, as soon as I can. Um, so I just have my Angel uh, walk up utilizing the plus two speed from uh, my tier bonus. And I just have my Forsaken run. Uh, I was contemplating uh, riling the angel first, so the angel or so the forsaken could take some fury off, but I decided against it. Uh, my black frost shard, go ahead and run. Uh, the shredder advances and puts up tenacity on my angel. Uh, it's not that he has anything to that could possibly uh, get to me, but the extra defense is always nice. Uh, well, extra defense and armor. Uh, I have my uh, Sorcerer's and Hellion advance, my other Angel advances, again using the, the speed bonus, uh, and just toes the zone. I have Belphegor run uh, to get him into a good position for next turn. And so I have the uh, Sorcerer's and Hellion runs as well. And my last angel, I go ahead and rile it uh, for three. And it's going to run as well. I have my pot, advance, and I have my hex hunters uh, go ahead and run. I'm trying to gauge uh, distance. Uh, I want to run so that I'm in position to threaten uh, his gators next turn, or well, threaten that entire flank next turn, uh, but I don't necessarily want to get charged by gators, especially considering that uh, they cause terror uh, if they chant Dirge Mist. So next I have uh, Bethane goes and I'm going to have her cast Ashen Veil on uh, the Hex Hunters. Uh, not so much for the concealment, but more for the um, uh, defense bonus uh, against living models. Uh, turns them effectively into uh, defense 16 hex hunters, uh, which means that his gators are going to need nines. So he can either chant terror and plus one defense, or he can chant cold blooded with a re so he gets the reroll against me. Either way, it, it kind of works out. Um, and then I just have her throw out a whole bunch of tenacities. Okay, going back through the whole reaving process, removing. You know, just the, the typical maintenance stuff. Um, checking my control range. One way I can do a lot of measuring to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Trying to figure out how my turn is going to go. I uh, activate the Swamp Gobbers. Uh, they go and put out their the big 5-inch AoE. Uh, the reason they went that direction is because of the Black Frost Shard. I knew they couldn't see through the cloud. And I was really worried about their uh, magical abilities of uh, Ice Cage and the one that increases damage by, by plus two. Now I activate the Gators. They do Dirge of Mist, and then they run. Uh, I put the one up in the front to kind of help be a blocker. The others just kind of sit in the backside, kind of filling in zone space. And then the Taskmaster comes up and puts Tempered Flesh 
on the uh, unit. So they're back to, you know, higher defense and they have tough. So now the other game and posse, they're going to declare a charge. They're going to do Dirge of Mist as their prayer. And then they're going to take the charge order. I measured my complete threat range, uh, which is 12 inches. And I was able to get in to both of the models that I charged. And the rest of the unit is going to run to basically just fill in gaps and you know hopefully try to hold the zone from anything that may be coming next. I ended up hitting the first one, ended up killing it, and then the other one ended up missing. So now the Taskmaster advances and does Tempered Flesh. So pretty much like I said before, it's all about you know doing a rinse and repeat. And because I was worried about the angels being able to come up and arm and pierce the titans before they could do anything, I kind of kept them back a little bit so they wouldn't uh, wouldn't get charged and armor pierced right away. That's why, if you notice, I know I slid the uh, bronze back back a little bit. Now I'm checking to see where my kill box is because uh, I know that if I get too far forward. I'm probably going to see an angel to my caster's face. So I activate the, the unit, advance up to the wall, because the wall does allow me to hide behind it. And, uh, you know, be still out of the kill box. I then put up Sun Hammer to try to minimize the beast coming in at me. And then Mullet Karn activates, Rouse for four, and my turn done. Okay, going into my turn two. So, for this turn, I really uh, want to start scoring. Um, he did manage to charge my Hex Hunters last turn uh, with, with Gators. Thankfully, they didn't break, and I didn't lose anybody. Um, well, I may have lost one. But I didn't lose anybody uh, particularly important. Um... It would have been fairly bad for me had they had the hex hunters broken, but as it stands, um, I think I'm in, in a fairly decent uh, position right now. So to start things off, I just have Belfagor advance, um, trying to get him into a, a good position, um, so that uh, I can possibly arc some spells. Uh, my Black Frost shard advances as well. Because I really want to get uh, harm up on the uh, the Gator unit there. I start off with an ice cage, uh, just to hopefully be able to hit. Um, so I do, uh, dropping that Gator's defense by two, and then I throw harm at him uh, managing to hit uh, so I get plus two to my damage rolls against the gator unit uh, now so which is gonna be helpful um, I don't have a whole lot of high uh, high pow attacks um, I mean the hex bolts are pow 13s uh, but versus the the gators if they're engaged is pow 18 so it's dice minus five so every little bit helps um, I go ahead and advance uh, Bethane, who casts, uh, pops her feet, and I drop an eruption of spines, uh, but I only hit, uh, I only bounce once, so, uh, the gator takes a pow 10, which is dice minus 6, which only, or a pow 12, takes a couple of points, and then I put a couple of points into the objective as well. And then I put up a couple of tenacities, and that'll be it uh, for Bethane. So I want to measure my control area here uh, just to make sure that I'm, I'm going to be able to to do what I need to do. Uh, and then I go ahead and uh, have my hex hunters advance. Um, they've already passed their terror check, so I don't need to take another one. Uh, I'm hoping that a bunch of uh, 
PAL 13 or PAL 13, well, PAL 15 with uh, with a harm up uh, against the Gators uh, will be enough to more or less kill the majority of the unit, if not all of it. So, uh, start rolling. And he starts making tough checks. So, I kill the gator, I get a corpse uh, from my pot. So, PAL 15 auto boosted uh, attacks are, are fairly decent. Um, so,. I get another. Uh, I kill another gator. I get another corpse uh, for the spawning vessel, and he keeps making at least a couple of tough checks, um, which is very frustrating. Very very frustrating, uh, especially with the taskmaster there, uh, since they're not going to be knocked down. I still have to roll to hit them. trying to wipe out or at least kill the majority of that unit uh, so I go ahead and uh, I, I do manage to kill the unit down to one guy um, but he's still in the zone uh, so I have my spawning vessel advance and I go ahead and spawn a stinger uh, I've already got a shredder on the table so I don't necessarily need uh, need another shredder at this point um, it'd be nice but uh, the stinger with the with the poison on his tail against the gator is is going to be a lot uh, a lot more effective um, so I managed to kill the last gator and I start refilling my pot so as of right now all he's got left in the zone is one of the uh, the guardians uh, from Makeda's unit uh, contesting the zone um, so if I can manage to kill the objective and kill the guardian uh, I will have scored two points this turn which will have put me uh, up fairly decently on the scenario so I have my sorcerers and hellion advance uh, the the guardian is uh, defense 12 power, uh, armor 18 um, so it's dice minus six, but a decent roll, uh, since it only has five boxes, should kill it. Um, I end up doing, uh, two points to it, so it's still alive, and I really, uh, have nothing left at this point that can kill it, so I'm going to, um, content myself with killing the objective and scoring at least a point. So, uh, I charge the objective with my angel. Uh, I charge for free because of the Sorcerer's and Hellion, uh, and uh, with my armor-piercing attack on the already damaged objective, I managed to kill it. My Shredder advances and puts up Tenacity for free because of uh, Bethane's feet. Here I'm pretty much trying to figure out what I want to do with the uh, with the other side. Uh, I go ahead and um, move up my angel. Uh, I boost an armor-piercing attack at the. Uh, or I move up the angel. I boost an armor-piercing attack at the uh, the gator. Um, I go ahead and boost damage. 
Uh, he makes his tough check, and then I buy two more attacks and don't do anything. Uh, so then I go ahead and repulse for free uh, with the feet, and that angel's pretty much done. I have my other angel advance. And pretty much do the same thing. Uh, making sure it's in my control area. I boost an armor piercing attack. Um, and he makes his tough check. Buy an attack. And that'll kill it. Uh, so I kill a gator. Um, so I've managed to kill uh, a fairly decent amount of gators this turn. Um, I have my Sorcerers and Hellion advance uh, into the cloud that the gobbers have put down. Um, and go ahead and uh, have her spray. I hit a, a couple of the gators. Um, and I do some damage. So, but he keeps making tough checks. I have my uh, Forsaken Advance and take off some of the Fury from the Angels, and then that is my turn. Okay, pulling back all the tokens, reaving, all the other happy stuff. I end up letting Sunhammer drop because he's in my face, and I'm hoping to be able to engage and do some damage this turn. That uh, you know, Sunhammer won't be that as uh, that important. I'm hoping that uh, with threat ranges and everything else, that I'm able to get my caster in there with Vortex of Destruction and be able to kill some stuff. Thankfully, the one member of the Exalted Court actually ended up surviving, so it stopped him from scoring two points in a single turn. Don't know how that happened, but. Luck did have a, a big role in that, <clears throat> which also give me a have given me battle driven. So now they're gonna be plus two armor, plus two strength, and gain Pathfinder. So I activate the one Taskmaster. She ends up putting Pain Driver on the Gaiman unit, which gives them plus two strength. And now they're going to activate, they're going to do Cold-Blooded, which allows them to re-roll failed to hits. And they're going to take the charge order. Um, this is where I kind of realized I made a mistake on my charging. I should have actually charged that Gator in before the other one. So I could have gotten uh, more of them in with their three inch movement. But it's fine. Uh, you know, I, I can still get at least two charges, and the third gator is at least was going to be on. You know, I'll at least have three gators on the one angel. So I go ahead and I roll it out. You know, trying to inflict as much damage as possible. Hopefully, I can kill off the beast. Because uh, three angels on the table is not a not a fun thing to see. It really, is not fun at all. But I'm able to end up killing him, killing off the one, and then the other gator that was over by himself. He ends up uh, doing some damage to the other angel. That tenacity put up on them makes it really tough to uh, deal with them. They do. They make some high defense and pretty decent arm. Makes it uh, makes it a challenge to get rid of them. That is for sure. Now I gotta figure out what to do about the other zone and try not to do too much to lose uh, too many more control points. 
because uh, it looks like this this game is going to come down to either a caster kill or a scenario, which is every game. But I'm hoping that I can potentially start getting control points. That way, if this was a, an actual tournament, I should uh, be better off in the sta final standings. Should I win or lose? So I activate the bronze back. He's going to go ahead and charge the objective. Thought about, I had the distance to move to the side, and my initial thought was if I move to the side, I can do train wreck and then train wreck up, but then the inch wouldn't help, so I went ahead and made that move instead. My opponent was nice enough to let me uh, reposition. And uh, the f first two swings, I was able to kill off the objective. And the reason I repositioned the bronze back where I did was so that if I did get repulsed from the angel, it'd be really hard for him to, for him to repulse me out of the zone. So now I'm having to worry about the lower zone and see how that one's going to play out. I'm hoping that uh, I can reduce some of the number in the zone. So I activate the Taskmaster. She gets in the zone, charging the Stinger. I roll, I hit, and he is able to finish off the stinger which was a shock to me but I guess she was really mad because she ended up losing her Gatorman posse she was attached to but that also freed up the the charge lane for the gladiator and for other models that were behind that I didn't really want to have get charged I was checking my control area to see if the uh, Hellion, the Sorceress, was within 11 inches, which is my complete threat range. I drop two to cast Vortex of Destruction. I then declare charge. She charges the Sorceress. The one court member charges the Angel, and the other one charges the other Sorceress. Towing the zone, of course. Unfortunately, Makeda did not tow the zone at this point in time. But she did pop her feet, which means that any fury spent, uh, well, any models that died from her battle group, she could either gain or remove a point of fury from her or her beasts. I managed to do some damage on the one Hellion, but not kill it. And then I was able to do a couple points of damage on the... Angel. Makeda goes. And I'm having her do swings on the, uh, the sorceress. Which I find killing. And now I get to do Blood Boon. Which is an ability that says that after she kills something, that she gets to cast a spell... Uh, within, with three point, uh, three feet or less. So I'm measuring five inches of my control area because I want to make sure that it, my target's going to be in. Uh, so I end up hitting the front hex hunter. I boost it to hit. The three inch AoE from Eliminator because that's the uh, spell I chose to use. Which is uh, three inch AoE. Anything under the AoE takes a PAL, th well, PAL 13 is the initial hit. And the nice thing is I only, well, the bad thing is I only ended up killing one model. I was hoping for better dice rolls. And even with boosting, I couldn't, I couldn't kill off uh, the third guy. But because I did kill off one guy, I do get to make a single two inch advance, which puts me in combat with the other two guys. So I spend one to buy an attack. And I managed to hit him, kill him. I get a fury back. I figure uh, no guts, no glory. So I buy another attack. I hit, I kill, I get my fury back. It's kind of a nice little setup, really. 
Uh, her feet is very nice for infantry clearing, especially if you can, you know, advance and keep advancing. So now the gladiator, he activates, he charges. I boost my initial swing. I boost my second swing. And I boost the damage because I don't think I'm going to be able to hit him again. Needing nines to hit. And then I pretty much max him out. But he doesn't, he just does a few points of damage, not really enough. This is, the, this is the part where I kind of messed up. I was measuring my control range, trying to see how far down I can get with Mollet Karn. Um, at first, I was going to charge the an Angel, because I had line of sight, and I knew I could get there. But then I was thinking that if if I could do it, I could potentially get a lot more, more in there if I were to charge the Hex Hunters. So I ended up char declaring one of the Hex Hunters as my target. And he was just out by less than a quarter of an inch. Going into turn three, uh, I've lost a couple of things. Um, he managed to kill an angel, uh, which is never fun. And he's got the my right flank uh, fairly well locked up. Uh, the score is currently tied one to one and now I have to actually figure out how to try and uh, extricate myself from the situation I go ahead and start with the the spawning vessel Go ahead and spawn a shredder, uh, who then uh, goes ahead and advances, uh, goes rabid, and bites the uh, the guardian there, uh, managing to kill it, uh, but triggering battle driven on Makeda's unit. So, not not great, uh, but it had to had to happen. Um, so I start off. Uh, with the um, Black Frost Shard, uh, trying to hard roll an 8 um, for an Ice Cage, an Ice Cage, and then harm on Makeda. Uh, it doesn't work out. Um, I miss all three times, which uh, means that I'm not going to get a, a bonus to hit or to damage her. So that's not particularly good. I have Bethango, and then I throw a Gallows at uh, Makeda through Belphegor, and manage to miss. Uh, so I sit on one and uh, put Carnivore on Belphegor uh, for the for the additional uh, two hit bonus. Now I have Belphegor advance um, and do what I probably should have done in the first place, which was uh, have him uh, two-handed throw Makeda. Uh, I have him I have him throw her at uh, at Malik Karn uh, mainly because I mean, well, he was the closest target, and I don't want her to scatter away from somewhere um, that I, I wouldn't be able to uh, to attack her at. Um, so I go ahead and boost damage, uh, and at dice minus 10, I don't manage to do anything, uh, really. Uh, so, and, uh, Molokar takes a POW 9, 
but it's dice minus nine. So I don't really, uh, not particularly hopeful that I was going to do anything to him, but you know, at this point, every little damage, uh, damage roll helps. So, uh, the angel goes ahead and, uh, repulses and then advance, uh, pushing away the gladiator and then advancing, uh, as far as he can, um, uh, towards Makeda, staying in Malik Karn's uh, melee. Since she's knocked down, I, I boost an auto, uh, an armor-piercing damage roll on her. Uh, at POW 16, this dice minus 3, uh, I do a fairly decent amount of damage that he, she then transfers. Um, so, and then I buy an attack and don't do anything. So... Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky for me. Um, I have to uh, position, try and position all of my hex hunters uh, so that they can actually draw line of sight to her. Um, uh, well, draw a line of sight to uh, to Makeda, um, so that I can start throwing hex bolts at her. Uh, I have already used my feet, uh, so it's going to be dice minus six, which is why I really wanted to get that uh, um, harm off on her. But yeah, um, some order of activation errors uh, means that I'm going to be rolling dice minus six instead of dice minus four. And my dice go fairly cold. Um, I don't have a problem hitting her, mainly because she's on the ground, so she's only defense five. Um, but my damage rolls kind of tank, and I don't really do enough to her. Um, I think she has six points uh, left after after everything's said and done. Um, so, Uh, my shredder goes rabid, advances, and uh, bites the uh, the gator that's that's standing there. Um, goes ahead and buys another attack, and then uh, manages to kill it. The Forsaken goes ahead and charges uh, the Gators. They're only defense 12 this turn because he uh, chanted cold blooded. Uh, but she misses her charge attack, and then I buy two additional attacks and uh, miss the first one. And then the next one, I do a point of damage. So uh, at this point, I'm mainly just trying to, to tie him up with stuff. Uh, so that it's a little bit more difficult for him to to move around uh, and get good charge lanes off on that uh, on my angel. I decide to have my angel uh, walk away um, and eat a free strike, uh, not realizing that pain driver lasted for a round. Um, so it walks away, eats a free strike, and uh, which ends up taking out the spirit. Which means that I can't boost my uh, my damage roll on the shot uh, that I take into uh, Makeda. So I hit her, no crit, uh, and then do no damage. So that and. That ends the idea that I'm going to be able to assassinate her this turn. So, I have my uh, sorceress um, goes ahead and sprays again, and uh, does some damage uh, to the gators. Um, 
I'm whittling them down fairly quickly. Uh, I think at the end he has uh, like one or two left. Okay, not knowing how I really survived that turn, I went ahead and read my fury. I kept Vortex of Destruction. Uh, the Gladiator then fails its frenzy check, and it goes crazy and smashes a Hex Hunter into the mud. Would have been nice if he would have been okay, but that's why they, that's why beasts can frenzy. Activate the Taskmaster. She gives them uh, Pain Driver again, because I need the extra damage, because I'm hoping to kill off the, uh, the Forsaken and the Shredder that's in the zone. So I, I advance up the Gator. He goes cold-blooded. He ends up swinging, killing off the Forsaken. He uses his Reach Attack on the one Shredder. Ends up hitting him. Not quite enough to kill him, but I definitely put a, a sizable dent into his health grid. Um, then activate the Taskmaster. Already killed one model. Let's see if she can do it again. She she charges, uh, swinging on the Hex Hunter, but staying within melee range of the Shredder to try to keep it locked down. She swings, hits, kills the Hex Hunter. She is not a very happy lady this, this game. Would be uh, interesting to see them do that more often, but them being in combat is kind of a different uh, thing, anyways. So I activate the bronze back. He boosts it to hit on the sorceress on Hellion. He finishes her off. He then take uh, takes his second fist on the little guy, little shredder, and then do my tusks and am able to kill him. And so now I'm just kind of standing there in the zone. Uh, activate the gobbers to move them out of the way because well they were in the way and they are also there so they can start to uh, hold the zone contest the zone whatever it may be something in the zone now I activate Makeda which is with the one last guardian they just take the charge order she stands up shakes off her she uh, stands up and for goes her movement to get an action the one charges the angel, ends up killing the angel because of the free strike earlier. And then now Makeda sits there and starts to swing. I'm trying to figure out which one has the best defense and arm combination. So I boost it to hit on the angel because the defense 15. I still need at least a 7 to hit. I hit and I do quite a bit of damage. I'm really impressed with the damage roll. Thanks for the Vortex of Destruction for boosting. I buy an attack, I boost it to hit, I end up being able to kill off the angel, I buy an attack on the light war beast, I hit, don't need to boost that because, well, it's a light war beast, but I then remember that I get vortex of destruction, uh, I get uh, blood boon, so now I'm going to do eliminator again on the guy who I want to do it the first time, I hit him, I kill him outright, kill the second guy, and now onto the Black Frost Shard. Um, I do not roll high enough to kill either any of them off, but I do point, put a few points of damage on them. And now I bought the attack, I re-rolled it to hit, because I forgot if I hit or not, and the damage, I end up doing some damage on the Light War Beast, and now she is sitting on one transfer. Activate Moloch Karn, he does one to boost it to hit. I forgot that I could boost after the fact with him until my opponent reminded me, but I did do my sidestep forward because I do need to kill off that light war beast. I uh, take my next swing to hit. Thanks to Vortex of Destruction, it is boosted. So I get a roll of fourth dice because Weapon Master and boosted is funny. Uh, I end up doing some more damage. I do my next sidestep to try to get as many in... in melee as possible with him being the only one that has reach makes it a lot easier for him but I end up buying more swings in the light because I definitely need him to die and now it's a matter of buying more attacks and I start on the black frost shard 
because those guys can really hurt me if I don't remove them from the table. So I start buying swings and luckily for me I'm able to roll well enough that I can hit and pretty much kill them with a single swing. Well, the ones I could anyways. And then the final guy is hit and killed and that maxes him out. So going into turn four, uh, I have very, very, very little left. I'm currently down in scenario. Uh, I don't have a whole lot uh, left that I can really do. So uh, at this point, it's pretty much down to a last ditch uh, assassination attempt. And add to the fact that I've only got a couple of minutes uh, left on my clock. So um, I go ahead and start with the pot. Uh, the pot advances and uh, I spawn a stinger. Um, I spawn a stinger as far forward as possible um, trying to uh, stay in Makeda's back arc but unengaged by the gladiator. Um, and then I go ahead and take swings with the uh, with the acolytes at the um, uh, taskmaster managing to kill it. Make sure that I, uh, I'm measuring the the melee range of the gladiator. I've managed to screw up my my placement of the stinger, uh, but I am still engaged with Makeda, so it kind of works out. I go ahead and uh, throw a spell at Makeda, but don't really do anything to it to her. Um, I go ahead and put Carnivore on the uh, shredder just to, to help it hit. Uh, my hex hunter advances, throws a hex bolt and misses. The shredder advances, goes rabid, or goes rabid advances and then bites Makeda twice, uh, managing to burn through her transfer. And then my stinger goes and uh, manages to hit Makeda, boosts his damage roll, and manages to kill her.